Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Don Johnson, and we're at the Clemson University ICAR Center. And today we will be dissecting a pen tumbler lock. Um, and the group seven members include Solomon Cole, Chilla Drew. In this video, we will determine how the lock operates. Uh, we will just also determine how we would redesign the lock um, so the lock uh, to make it easier to manufacture and assemble. Um, we also determine how we would open the lock without damaging it, uh, without a key. Uh, also, we will evaluate uh, the device and explain its strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and uh, finally, we'll have uh, suggestions, um, changes to the design of the lock. In 1861, Linus L. Jr. patented the pen tumbler lock, which remains in use today. It's a fully assembled pen tumbler lock. This frame, you can see the lock being disassembled from the door. First, we have the, um, the lock screws, um, the actuator screws, uh, the housing cone, the cylinder, and finally the bolt. In this frame we see the cylinder, and the cylinder is the outer piece of the lock that houses the upper pin chamber. As the pin cover is removed, uh, exposing the springs, uh, the cylinder, and the plug, uh, you can see the pins as well. Right now I want to break down each um, portion of the lock and kind of explain what it does. Uh, first we have our tumblers and the tumblers are the key pins that are touched by the keys and they are sized differently uh, corresponding to the different depths it cut in the key and when the correct key is inserted all the key pins will be aligned and it will create what is called a shear line allowing the plug to rotate. Next we have the pins and the pins are placed between the tumblers and the springs and in their resting position the pins block the rotation of the plug. The plug is the inner piece of the lock that rotates upon insertion and tension of the correct key. Uh, the plug is uh, connected to the cam to actuate the bolt mechanism when rotated. The cam is an extension connected to the back of the plug which actuates the bolt mechanism to lock and or unlock the door. In the frame we see the plug uh, and the cam being extended, the fork shaped uh, end of the plug, uh, we see the key and we see the tumblers that sit on top of the key. We also see the uh, C-clip or C-clamp that uh, helps lock the uh, plug into place. This is uh, the locking bolt and it actually locks um, into the, out of the door, into the wall and also the lever that actually keeps the bolt locked in place. Fully disassembled the pin tumbler lock um, now in this frame we can see the uh, reassembling of the um, plug, the cam, uh, the tumblers, and the C-clamp. We have the uh, reassembling of the plug back into the cylinder, uh, the C-clamp, uh, the pins going into the cylinder and the springs and finally the cover being administered. In this frame we have the uh, fully assembled pin tumbler lock being reasserted back in the door uh, starting with the bolt, locking bolt, uh, the cone housing cones, uh, the cylinder and the screws. In this slide we kind of wanted to um, show some of the design features of the pen tumbler lock, uh, which makes it a pretty uh, remarkable design. Um, 
can see the key being inserted into the plug and how the uh, pins are kind of sloped or machined to have a slope so the uh, metal slides uh, clearly back and forth over the pins. The strength uh, and the design of the pin tumble lock uh, we believe is this uh, lever uh, and the groove that is cut to hold the bolt uh, in place and locked and it can't be moved. The slope of uh, the cut and the lever uh, holds the pin in place from being able to move uh, back when it is locked. This project uh, we were asked to determine a few questions and one was to determine how we would open the lock without damaging it if we didn't have the key. Uh, two, uh, to determine the how we re we redesigned the lock to make it easier for manufacturing the symbol and to evaluate its strengths and weaknesses. Uh, first, uh, we'd like to uh, explain how to open the lock without a key and without damaging it, and that would be uh, by picking the lock. Um, that consists of a, a pressure wrench to slide in, holding uh, the pins down and sliding a uh, paper clip or a picking tool to move the tumblers into position. Next we wanted to um, evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of the lock and uh, my colleagues on team 7 we discussed this in detail and we believe that the uh, weaknesses one was the easiness of uh, picking the lock and getting it open and also the intricate parts, the number of parts uh, that were inside the lock that made it difficult uh, to reassemble. We believe the strengths, um, uh, one was the simplistic design that has stood the test of time and that hasn't too much uh, varied from the 1800s uh, after it had been patented all the way up to today's locks. After discussion of uh, the weaknesses of the lock, uh, we came up with several ideas uh, how to redesign the lock. And one was to have a cross-shaped key, and this would uh, alleviate the problem of uh, picking the lock, uh, which is rare, fairly simple. Um, this would uh, entail pins on each uh, section, four corners of the uh, lock, and that would eliminate uh, being able, one person to be able to uh, pick the lock. Uh, we also discussed the uh, material of the pins, which is copper, uh, which is a soft metal, and we believe uh, by making the pins uh, titanium, uh, stronger metal, um, this would uh, enforce, reinforce the lock a little bit better than the copper. Um, also, uh, we suggested that we make the, the springs a little bit stronger. Um, they're rather uh, flexible and make them a little bit stiffer so you can't slide a picking tool up and move the tumblers. This concludes our presentation from Team 7. Thank you for your time and your patience.